so we've been learning literature ever since then so guys um without wasting much of our time we'll begin with the lecture beautiful just before we vacated i gave you guys a text titled invisible man ooh, ooh. hello here's it titled what invisible man you were expected to read this text it is a text of 536 pages i know it's really bulky but it is a page turner i don't know about you it was for me i kept on flipping through till i got to the last page i really enjoyed reading it i don't know about you guys but it is a page turner so guys um and i also gave you guys some assignment talking about the background of the author and all that yes invisible man is a text written by ralph ellison what did i say ralph ellison so we're beginning with that so guys let's make progress okay let's make progress so now this um, um novel is an african-american novel african-american literature yes titled invisible man yes you know we've done africa now we are non african and this is is african-american in particular okay and our topic is setting settings i know i have taught you settings but we'll just have a recap of what setting is okay we'll just quickly define settings okay guys so what is setting are we together please just before we make progress ensure that you're with a pen and a notebook okay a notebook to jot down please 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 what i have on the slide is different from what you will see in your notes okay as much as i try to make the note self-explanatory you need to listen to me so make sure you're copying what you see on the screen and what i say because not everything i say is on the screen and not everything I, that's on the screen is in the notes and not everything i say is also in the notes beautiful the setting is both the time and geographical location within a narrative either non-fiction or fiction a literary elements the setting helps initiate the main backdrop and mood for a story before you can fully understand the story you need to know the circumstances in which that story was written you need to know the um the time you need to know the place how was the story written why was it written the background where was it written really important for you to understand you said certainly both the time and the geographical location i could write a story today if i write a story today in yenegua right here in mingi road bellary my geographical location is um south south in yenegua biosa south south region of nigeria that is my geographical location i'm in the south the south south and the time would be the 21st century this is 2020 it would be this the novel was written um may 2020 in the 21st century okay yes so the setting is both the time and the geographical location now let's look at this book okay let's make progress to do let's look at this book what is geographical location you will get to know that and the time so that is just what setting is time and geographical location so the setting is the environment in which a story or event takes place setting could in, can include specific information about time and place example boston massachusetts in 1809 or can simply be descriptive example a lonely farmhouse on a dark night now setting is the environment in which a story or event takes place where does it take place we could say bellary schools we could say like they have here a lonely farmhouse on a dark night you understand i could say a ranch i could say a ranch i could say um, a secondary school building you get it just the environment or specific information include specific information about the time and the place now here is something i want you to take note of a novel could could be written in 2020 but the second setting could be in 1940 20th century you understand i could write a novel here today about an event that happened some hundred or fifty years ago so that i write a novel today does not necessarily mean the setting would be now you could write a novel today about the year you were born some of you some 10 15, 10 12 13 14 15 16 years ago let's take chimamanda's Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's Half of a Yellow Sun, a novel she wrote in the 21st century. 
the setting it is set in the 20th century in that novel she talked about the biafra war the nigerian civil war if you have read the novel or if some of you have seen the movie adaptation of that novel the nigerian civil war that is what she discussed in that novel so automatically my my setting must not necessarily be present time and age it can be present time and age it can be any other time is that clear are we together beautiful let's make progress yes we said the novel begin in a small town of the american south in the 1930s then moves to a nearby negro college after the narrator's untimely expulsion from the negro college he relocates to new york city harlem and lives first in a boarding room then in his own apartment now when you hear of american south America, some of you must have heard it in movies. I'm from, this, I'm from the South Side, Chicago, South Side, Chicago. When you have American South, what, the first thing that comes to your mind is racial oppression, segregation, discrimination, inequality. Yes, that is the first thing that comes to our mind. When you hear of the South Side, it's that bad. The South Side was a place that was full of a lot of racial oppression. It was so terrible blacks were discriminated a lot of inequality blacks were not seen as human beings blacks were slaves yes slave trade was predominant in the south of america slave trade was predominant it was it was rigorous that they did it it was done they they snuck in the slaves and most of them had their habitats there most of them were housed there they were get, taken to ranches to farm on uh, on the in the round to go to the plantation of the white men you could see injustice inequality you understand then um he grew up in the south though he was free yes his grandfather used to be a slave but then his grandfather became free so that automatically made him free imagine being a human being you don't even have your rights it takes a white man to determine if you're free or not it was that bad what do we say then you can we, we would notice that um he later got a scholarship then he went to a college if you can remember vividly he went to a college then um um he got expelled one or two things happened he got expelled we won't go into the that now and then he relocated to new york now new york is located in the north he grew up in the south then he went to new york in the north harlem harlem he went to new york harlem and lives first in a boarding room then in his own apartment you know the main house okay let's go back there's something i want to show you guys before we make progress now the novel invisible man was written in 1947 by ralph ellison it is a time in america when jim crow and the segregation was alive and heavily enforced racism and discrimination was rapid and blatant in the society it was really sad time for african americans for blacks because of their skin color it was really sad it's a situation where um people don't see you as who you are but they use your skin color to judge you use your skin color to determine what you will be and so it made a lot of them think twice about their identity a lot of them became invisible they were not seen as humans you understand it was written in 1947 now um let me tell you a little bit about the mood of the author at the time he wrote the novel the time he wrote it that is 1947 his mood this book was written in 1947 but it was published when a book was written it depends on when it was published I could write the book today and because of one thing and another it could be published in four or five years yes you know they go to a lot of editing and all that now it was written in 1947 just two years after the second world war what did i say take note of the years the second world war ended 1945 the book was written in 1947 two years after the second world war now the mood of the author was one of despondency depression sadness let me tell you something in the military there was segregation yes the blacks went for the war the white also went but the military was segregated in the sense that uh, white soldiers were given upper hand they were giving you know professional treatment while black soldiers were relegated to the background they were not regarded as humans or because of their skin color but they fought the war over one million African Americans were enlisted to join the army. So they went to Vietnam, they went to a lot of places to fight war. But they were not given the same treatment. Even in the vehicle that transported them to where they would be camped, there was segregation. The whites do not travel with the blacks. It was that bad. But guess what, guys? Let me tell you something. When he got to the battlefield, 
Are you guys listening? It got to the battlefield. The blacks were at the forefront. You understand? You say these people are these people are weak, these people are non entities, they do not exist. These people are black, they're dirty. You call them nigger, right? Then on a good day, you don't expect them to win battles for you, but no, they sent the niggers, the non entities, to fight their war, and the blacks were the blacks were always at the forefront. Yes. A lot of research will have it that they sent the blacks at the forefront to fight those war. There was equality then, you no know, white and blacks go front, fight, some of them die, they both die. When it comes to dying, both the white and the blacks will die. You understand? Even when it got to medical treatment, the whites will be treated first before the blacks. It was just that bad, it was that frustrating, guys. So, and that was the period. So, the, the Ralph Ellison, you know, just after the World War, these men came back from the war. Are you with me? They came back from the war to come and meet, you know, their country, you know, we are alive. And imagine coming back from a war and you're not re reminded that you're not human, you're not complete, you're a nigger. You're reminded that you don't sit close to a black man, a white man, because you're of your skin color. You're dirty, stay that way. You come to your country instead of you know expecting celebration you're only welcomed by your own people the whites welcome the whites the real human beings in quotes why you're not given any recognition at all so it was a period of sadness it was really you know this book um this book is, is an important voice in the civil rights movement yes this was one of the books that really you know it's 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 it was historical it's an important voice in the civil rights movement. It was a time in America when Jim Crow and segregation was alive. Jim Crow laws, there were um, sort of laws that were adopted in the South Side, especially, you understand, on how blacks should be treated, on how blacks should act. Even the way you act in public, they were giving certain laws about that. You understand? Segregation was heavy. Let's see a little bit about it. Jim Crow laws and Jim Crow state constitution. It was even in the constitution, you understand? provision mandated the segregation of public schools and public places and public transportation and the segregation of restrooms restaurants drinking fountains for whites and black the u.s military was already segregated i mentioned that now how many of you have seen this movie hidden figures if you have not seen it write it down hidden figures you could download it online fz movies there are so many sites toxic work hidden figures it is a true life story it's a historical biography you understand about the women it's about you know the NSA, the first the women that you know you know the a, a group of intelligent women who led to the um, America releasing the first man to visit space. You need to see that movie. In that movie, you would see that the black woman was working with the white man. She was the brain, but she was working in a big building in the headquarters. And in the headquarters, there was no rest a restroom for blacks. You would see in the restroom it's written "No colored allowed." white only so now when she wants to eat herself in the big headquarters she would have to run 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 down run some miles to go to the nearest place she could have a for colored restroom she was working with these people she was the brains of the um she was the brains of the nsa she was the brains of the um yeah naca or i don't know what they call it but then she had to run to the black side to use the restroom even coffee, coffee that while you're working, you know, you take a lot of coffee, the weather is usually cold. She wouldn't take coffee with her colleagues because blacks were not allowed to drink the same coffee whites were drinking. For so what? You understand? Even public transportation. Public transportation, there was segregation, if not until there was an uproar, there was this particular woman who refused. To, she was told to go down. You know, the white said she should shift to her side as a nigga. She said she wasn't going to shift. And there was an uproar, and there was a lot of lynching, mob, and that was when finally most of these things were abolished. It was schools, there were schools for the niggers. Of course, you know, the teachers will be also blacks, and so the government won't give them enough funding. Then there were schools for the entities, the humans, the whites. So this was a period, the novel, a period of discrimination. Are you getting it? This was a period of, you know, police brutality. If you can remember a character in this novel, Todd Clifton. Todd Clifton was gunned down by a policeman and nothing was done about it. There was no arrest made. How many of you can remember Todd Clifton was killed by a policeman? He was gunned down. Now, this book was published in 1952. 2020 to 1952 is 68 years. 
the guy is 68 years after issues in these books are still relevant today do we to hear stories of police brutality police shootings in the u.s we read it if not for this period of corona where everyone is indoors you would hear a story almost every two weeks, every three weeks, of a white policeman shooting down a black man. Yes, probably he would see him reaching for his pocket, would assume he's going for a gun, and they kill him. And what of this policeman goes scot free? If not for so social media, is that is one advantage of social media? A lot of protests going on, and you know you can't hide this things anymore. You can't kill us and go scot free. Justice has to be done, and sometimes in one or two cases, justice usually prevails so that is like that about that so this way jim crowler it was really a sad time for blacks you know the character of clifton he was murdered by a white policeman you know even drinking fountains the u.s military was also segregated so that's my previous the first chapter of the book i am is in the south you know he called himself i am he didn't have a name he was a nigger so a nigger had no identity so he was he felt invisible because he can't think for himself he had to think how others wanted him to think so the, the nigger had no name. He was called I am. You understand? I hope you know nigger is an offensive word. You shouldn't be using it. When a white man calls a black man nigger, it is derogatory. A black man called another black man nigger, that is okay. But when a white man tries to do it, it is derogatory. It's not allowed. In fact, there was this CNN presenter who used the word, a white CNN presenter, and he was fired. Of course, social media uproar. So the first chapter of the book, I am, is in the South. It, then he moved to the north, Harlem. Harlem is a New York borough famous for jazz and black culture. In the city, he comes in contact with an organization, the Brotherhood. Hope you know the, the, he became the leader. He became the spokesman for the Brotherhood. You know, this is uh, an organization that's supposed to be the voice of the voiceless. But we got to see how things turned out. Were they really the voice for the a voice for the voiceless? Did they really speak the minds of the blacks? You know, we got to see that later. We got to see the games they played. You all saw that. I saw it too. You understand? It was really tricky. Now, um, yeah. So let's in the north. And Harlem was a. It's famous for jazz and black culture. A lot of blacks settled in Harlem in the north. So that was the best place to even get an accommodation. Trust me, if he had gone to any other place than Harlem, he wouldn't even see where to live. He wouldn't even see a white landlord who is willing to accommodate him. If you can remember, second class citizen issues of racism were discussed. That is why it was even titled second class citizen, in the sense that when Ada and her husband were stranded, they needed a house. If you notice, there was no white man wanted to give them house. They had to meet a fellow black man. It, the racism is that bad. So he said, the men's house, and it was a predominantly black society, ruled and governed by whites, by the whites. Are you getting it? So it, this was the time, of the book was written and like i said the book is an important void in the civil rights movement this is the setting it was set in the 1920s 1930s now the time when he wrote the book was just after the civil um the world war ii but the setting of the book was two decades back meaning he wrote this book in 1947 but he took the book 20 years back in the 1920s 1930s are you getting it like i said about setting i could write a book today and date it back to the 1940s i could write a book today and date it back to last year you understand that is one thing about setting so his book was set in the early 20th century are you getting it when slave trade the slave trade now you might be saying it is possible as a student you can't really relate to this whole racism thing I'm, i guess because we grew up in nigeria a black country so who wants to come and make me feel like i don't belong in my country at least most of us were not born during the colonial era now let me give you a reason why you have to relate to issues issues raised up in this book because most of these blacks black americans african americans have their ancestry in africa in fact virtually all of them even the mulattoes, the mulattoes are also known as the mixed breed. Even the mulattoes who are in their sixth generation, their ancestry is down to Africa. Yes. Down to Africa. Most of them were slaves. You are going to study a lot of poems. Most of them were slaves. You know, they were slaves too. Yeah. If you have read the poem, The Grieved Land by Umar Farouk, say, say, don't worry, I'll teach you that poem. They were slaves who were shipped during the colonial era 
they come to Africa, they look for able-bodied men, you know, they look for women who can work and who they want to violate and molest. They pack them into the ship, the, the, the ship, and they start going. Sometimes these journeys last for two, three months. The white men, and they barely gave these people food. They were eating crumbs. They were eating crumbs, just little food. And when any of them fall sick, probably because of overcrowding or diarrhea or sickness, they throw you across. Now, in fact, they enjoyed those going um they enjoyed those long journeys because in to them it was a way of knowing the the strong blacks people that that can be wrestling people that can be strong enough to withstand the the weather you know the turmoil on sea you know both the ship capsizing and all so a lot of black men you know they fall sick and those who fall sick the moment they die they will just wrap you carry you up and throw you into the atlantic yes it is a true life story. A lot of bones were discovered, bones of uh, our, our ancestors who were thrown into the Atlantic because they died, who were sick and they were not even taken care of. Then those who made it to the white, yes, if they can make it thus far these three months without adequate care, they are strong enough to work in our plantations. Please see 12 years a slave. If you want to know more about police brutality and police shootings, for, um, for teenagers, I recommend this movie. I think it's teenagers friendly. It's PG-13. So you can see this movie. Um, uh, the Hate You Give. You know, the acronym is Thug Life. They say that in of Thug Life. The Hate You Give. Just browse The Hate You Give. It's an African-American movie. You know, a teenage, teenage boy that was gone down. You can see this movie also. Um... Okay, this is the only movie I can recommend for teenagers. Then 12 Years a Slave is also, oh, 12 Years a Slave, it's really sad. It is not, the movie is not going to talk about the book, yes, but it's going to make you see a lot of, open your eyes to the issues of racism that we, Ralph Ellison raised, okay? Why blacks were always felt invisible. They were invisible men, not literally, but the, fact, the society never saw them. How can you discriminate a human because of skin color? Guys, does it even, is it even sounding right? Does it make sense? So my color is different. You discriminate against a human. You know these things don't even. It don't. It, they don't. They do not make sense to me at all. All these forms of discrimination. We should be able to see each other. I hope you know some of you do it. Yes, you. You know here we do it too. Most times we discriminate people based on their tribe, their ethnicity. We would want to know. You see, for, um, you see, we don't give people the benefit of the doubt. Stere stereotypes. We already know that they are fond of doing this and so uh, you know it shouldn't be so okay so now this is a lot about setting if you have any question you know how to reach me feel free to ask your questions please as this lecture is going on be writing down your question and be typing them in probably on the whatsapp platform or any other platform provided for our lecture please send in your questions okay I really enjoy talking to you guys about the setting. Next week we'll make progress to talk about start discussing characters and themes, of course, so that we can be done with this book. Please, if you have not read this book, read it. Now, if you're if you're with me and you have not read this book, 